Today, we discuss Miro. Today, I want to talk about the hellscape that is technical diagramming, right? Everybody's nodding their heads right now. Uh Uh-huh. And there is a potential solution that I want to share. There was one name that several people brought up. I did some digging, and it's kind of nuts how much this program Miro has for developers. I have to share this. It could potentially be a game changer for you. So my favorite part about Miro is that half the work is already done. Like right now, typically we spend hours starting diagrams from scratch, gathering information. You get buy-in from every team. Uh, You know, that's a lot of work to do. But Miro has a full set of integrations with the tools you're probably already using. And they also offer open APIs and SDKs for custom solutions for all those niche diagramming use cases we have to do, right? So the end result is the same, but it doesn't take forever. It's a massive, massive time saver. I'm transforming basic flowcharts and network architectures, and it all lives in one place. So are you using Miro? Have you used it? I want to hear. That's M-I-R-O dot com. Hey guys, this is Nina Perez, and this is Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. I am so glad you're here. We are here to challenge and transform your thinking so you can get unstuck, crush those goals, and get shit done. Let's do this. What's up, y'all? This is Nina Perez, and this is Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. And I am here chilling on Winject. I think this is my 60th episode or something. It's crazy. So I hope that you guys are joining me. I'm going to make sure to be looking on the side here. So if you see my eyes looking up and over, I'm looking at the comments and I'm looking at my notes a little bit and all that stuff. So just as long as you know, don't, don't think I'm not like paying attention. I'm just looking at all kinds of stuff. I'm pushing my own buttons today. I've been left to my own devices. You never know what could happen. And I'm left to my own devices. So I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me. Make sure you go on to winject.com slash groups slash Nina Perez, because I want to make sure that you join my community. I have been looking in there. I've been trying to check out like how to like really start, um, brainstorming on building my community back there so I can hang out with everyone who wants to hang out with me on the podcast. I want to thank you guys for doing that. I want to also thank all of the amazing uh, women that I've had in my group coaching. It has been phenomenal for uh, ninaperez.com. If you want to go check that out, it's called Master Your Game. And we're working on our goals, our awareness, our mind flow, and our emotional intelligence. And it has been transformed formative because we are looking into deeper things in our lives and we are really, really connecting with what that means. So what's up? There is Kendra. Hello. It's been so long. Oh, how are you? I'm so glad you're catching me live now. I'm here every Monday. So thank you so much for hanging out, Kendra. I appreciate that. So um, I am live right now. So just go ahead and make me some comments like my girl Kendra just did. Uh, and I just wanted to um, really tell you guys to, to connect with me in that way. So it's again, it's winject.com slash groups slash Nina Perez. And you can be a part of my free podcasting community. And if you want to know more about my coaching program, which is going phenomenally well, I think I have like 15, 20 women in my group right now. It is going so powerfully and I'm helping women Um, really overcome shame, transcend unwanted behaviors. And then they're creating the business life uh, online, whatever that they're trying to create. And so we're co-creating that together after we deal with all of the emotional stuff that's stopping them from actually becoming the people they want to be. So I am stoked. It is going phenomenally well, phenomenally well. So I wanted to come on here today to talk to you about things that I've been talking to my group about, but also that I have been going through, right? So We're going to talk about something that is triggering, which is emotional triggers, emotional triggers. What's that, Kendra? Yes, I remember, but work has been hella crazy. I know, I know, you know, work has been kind of crazy for all of us, Kendra. And one thing that I'm noticing, you know, being out there now and like looking around and seeing what's going on out there, like they have like 22 paragraphs for like one job position. I'm like, Okay, well, this job position is for like six people and they're asking one person to do it. So it is crazy out there, Kendra. So I can imagine that work has been hella cray because that's how it's been everywhere. And I think that's why these women have been connecting with me to build like their businesses, right? Like to really transcend those behaviors that they have where they don't think they're good enough or they have imposter syndrome or they're dealing with some, some deeper shame issues and things we have to deal with. 
because they want to like have their own thing, right? Like there's, there uh, a lot of them are leaders too. They just want to be better leaders, which is pretty phenomenal that people think about their career that way, that they want to be better leaders. I know I'm one of those as well, but also I'm also an entrepreneur. I have my own, you know, coaching business. I have a, a kid's uh, cooking business. Like I have a lot of things going on, but the truth is, is you know, we have a lot of things that trigger us. And these jobs nowadays are, you know, just asking for the sun, the moon and the stars. And I just what I was like, really thrown back by that. I was like, wow, this job position is like literally five positions in one. And that's why everybody's feeling this burnout thing, right? And so I thought it was really important to come out with this uh, topic today, which is about your emotional triggers, right? Because many of us are being triggered in different ways. And a lot of things are happening because we're being challenged in our beliefs, in our values, in our sense of self, like all those things are triggering us and it's triggering and, and it's coming out in different ways, right? Because when you're triggered, it comes out in different emotional states. So you, you'll feel anger, you'll feel uh, fear, you'll feel sadness, you'll feel anxiety, you'll feel, you know, like um, shame, you'll feel all of these things that are triggering um, and it comes from, you know, uh, to Kendra's point, it, uh, stuff being hella crazy, right? Especially with like work and stuff, but also with like relationships, um, the political divide right now uh, amongst people is disgusting and it's making people full of these triggers. Like you can't even have a conversation with people. They immediately trigger and they don't, you know, it's just like a trigger all of a sudden because you said a different word or you said uh, you have a different belief system. And that is really like to me, fascinating that we can be programmed to be triggered. We can be programmed to be triggered because when you listen to something too much, you start to believe it, even if it's not true. And I mean, that's, that's the whole, you know, that's the whole case with, you know, brainwashing and all of that kind of stuff. Right. So, but when you're triggered and you start to go through these feelings, you feel like you're under attack, right? Your, your body is reacting with this fight or flight kind of feel because you're being triggered, right? And so your heart rate starts to increase, your breathing starts to become shallow, you start to feel like this sense of tension and tightness in your body and you're feeling it in your body, but you, you don't even know what you're feeling, you're just really triggered right now. And that is happening a lot, a lot to a lot of us. And sometimes we don't even know why, right? So for example, I was in a meeting uh, it was a business meeting with with these um, other uh, women, and um, the I, I think she was I wasn't a part of this company, but I was in the meeting. And then this woman questioned the validity of the ideas that were coming out. And instead of them like, oh, that's you know what? Let's think about that idea. I, I when I do like group settings with like leaders, I always talk about okay, that's a great idea, and. And let's see what the and is, right? Whatever the next idea is, so you can formulate something amazing, right? But what happens is when you are being triggered, you immediately go into a sense of anger and defensiveness, and you start to like really lash out on the person who is just asking a question, just literally just asking a question. They're just questioning what your idea is. And you feel like it's questioning the validity and the truth of your idea when really they're just trying to understand a deeper understanding of what it is you're bringing out there. And because we get triggered, we immediately go into the defense and the anger um, portion of it. Right. And so that is a, a true example of how in a, even in a business meeting or leadership meeting, how you can be triggered when somebody's asking you just a simple question and you start to like feel a physical reaction to this thing. And that's happening a lot in many different arenas. It's not just business. You know, you could be talking to a family member. They have a different belief system politically or whatever it is, and you are being triggered. That is an issue. When we are being triggered, we have to figure out why that is. Why is it that somebody can't have a different idea, a different vision, a different thought process without us being emotionally triggered or something happening within us that is making us angry or fearful or shameful or any of those things? And we have to ask ourselves, what's going on here? Like, we have to pause because if we're being triggered, there's a reason for that. And it could be deep seated. It could be much deeper rooted than just this particular scenario. It could be something that happened 
you to you when you were a child it could be hap- you know happened to you that something was traumatic that happened to you and you automatically made that a triggering point for yourself right good morning good morning babes um so i wanted to talk about emotional triggers because i <laughs> your girl has been definitely going through some emotional triggers and becoming aware of my my triggers or becoming aware of this happening to me is going to help me manage my emotional response to what I'm doing. It's going to help me manage my wh- what I'm doing in my life, what I'm doing in my business, what I'm doing with my thoughts and my ideas or what I want to do. And when I am aware of my triggers, now I can begin to recognize, wait a second, why is this triggering me? Why do I feel this way? Why am I, you know, like feeling like a fight or flight thing going on right now, right? And I realized like, you know, I have big things going on in my life right now. I'm really making some pretty hefty decisions, right? Decisions like moving to another state, decisions like starting to work remote or changing my career or, you know, like all of these things are coming up now. And I feel it. I feel it in my chest. Usually the triggering, like I feel it, the anxiety sits in my chest it is heavy. It sits there. It's almost like, you know, like a, like a, like a a toddler just sitting on your chest and you can breathe, but barely like that kind of feeling. And I had to start to ask myself, what the F is going on? Why am I being triggered? And even like when it comes to things like my health, this was so powerful, right? I was uh, talking to my coach, shout out to you, Karina, you are amazing. I was um, working with her and she was helping me through discovering what is going on here? What? It, why am I being triggered and upset and shamed when it comes to my weight, when it comes to my health, like all of that stuff? It was so powerful, guys. Okay, so I'm going to be completely transparent and share some, some stuff with y'all. So I was sitting in this uh, session with my coach and we were talking about, okay, tell me about the last time. And it's, it's a process, right? She goes through this whole amazing process of helping you identify these things. And it was a time when my ex, the one who was, uh, who almost killed me in a domestic violence. Um, he at one time came, uh, to my friend's house and I came outside. I had just broken up with him and one of the breakups anyway. And he punched me in the, in the, in the uh, center of my chest so hard that literally my breath, I mean, left my body, left my body. I thought I was going to die. I thought I was going to die. Um, And that was a real feeling. Like I literally thought I was going to die. I've never, ever felt that feeling before in my life. He literally knocked the air out of my body, out of my lungs. It was really, really bad. And I remember falling to the ground and thinking, I'm dying. I'm worthless. Uh, nobody cares. Nobody's going to care about me. Nobody's going to do anything about this. That's how I felt. I remember my friend standing a little ways from me, um, you know, cause I had, I had fell into the door after he punched me cause he had punched me out on the, de- on the little deck area. And I fell into the door and she didn't know what to do. She just stood there and stared at me. She had no idea what to do. And I remember just looking up at her and saying, trying to say help, but I could be, I, I, I mean, when I tell you I had no air, I had no air. And, and I slowly like started rubbing my stomach to try to get some air because I thought I was going to die. And, um, after that happened, after that incident happened, he apologized to me and I went back and I realized going through this scenario with my coach, that the reason that I struggle so much with my health and my weight is because he used to always call me fat and ugly and stupid and blah, 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 blah. And he hit me that day was telling me how stupid and fat and ugly and whatever I was. And believe me, I wasn't fat at that time. Now I'm overweight. I wasn't overweight then, but I realized that I, I took that moment and I was, I was living that moment subconsciously every time I tried to better myself because I went back to him. I realized that my fear with, with overcoming this issue of when it comes to weight and exercise and and being healthy is that I'm always fearful. I'm going to fail. I'm always fearful. I'm going to fail. And I always think I'm going to fail because I went back to him so many times. I'm going to go back to being 
I'm going to do well and then I'm going to fall back. I'm going to do well done and I'm not worth anything and I'm not, you know, uh, pretty enough and I'm fat and I'm stupid and all of those things that I actually took in as my um, identity and my, you know, yep, I guess you are. I guess you're stupid. I guess you're dumb. I you keep going back. You keep failing. You keep failing. You keep failing from that moment. And I realized that I, I, I have to change that scenario and what it means to me. And I did, right? So the last few months, as I've been thinking of moving and doing something different in our lives and, you know, like really putting my family first um, and thinking about my career moves and all that kind of stuff, I'm being triggered into, am I good enough? Can I do it? Am I worth it? Um, you know, will I fail? Will I, will I not fail? Will I go back? You know, things like that. And uh, truth be told is I am freaking worth it, right? But I had to look at, I had to sit back, look at my emotional triggers, look at what was happening to me and realize that I need to overcome these triggers that are killing me and are probably killing you. Because the, when you keep allowing these triggers to come into your life, they are stopping you from being the human that you are created to be. And when we have these triggers in our lives, and I have quite a few triggers that I am dealing, going through, especially with the moving situation, right? So because we're moving at a time where the recession is, is bubbling up, what happened to me in 2008 when the recession came is we lost our home that we were purchasing. We lost our cars. I had to uh, uh, disperse my children to different places and we were homeless and we slept in our friends' living rooms. We slept in our cars. We slept wherever we could. And I'm being triggered again because now we're moving again at a volatile time and my heart is racing and my hands are sweating and I'm feeling the triggers coming on right? And you have to do something about it. Don't just sit and just ignore that you're going through these and don't think that you have to go through these every time. And so the last few weeks have been very instrumental to this message I'm giving you today. There are ways to overcome triggers so that you can overcome these obstacles in your life and start to move forward and what you need to do. Because the truth is, is you're created for more. I'm sorry to say that if you don't believe it, but you're created for more. And if you are in a place where you are unhappy, where you are stuck, where you can't move forward, where you can't you see yourself better than that you are, you have some triggers, you have some things and emotional things you have to get through in your life because you are here for a purpose and a plan. If you woke up today, I'm sorry, there is a purpose and a plan for you. And it might not be having to go out and build a seven figure business because not everybody has to do that. I am talking about what is your purpose? What are you here for? What is holding you back? Right. And so I wanted to talk to you about ways that you can overcome this stuff so that you can start to transcend your emotional stuff that is holding you back so that you can be the person that you are created to be. And I don't know whether you believe in God or not, I do. I don't think I was just blown out of the air, out of osmosis and created to be the powerful house that I am today out of, out of the blue. I don't think that. And I think that everything we go through in life is to use to really impact the lives of others. Now, all of the emotional triggers that I have been through in my life, all of the trauma that I have been through in my life, and all of the obstacles that I have had to overcome in my life is so that I can serve others. And I'm hoping that as I'm sitting here today talking to you, that I am serving you, right? And when I talk to the women in my coaching program, I am serving them. And when they leave and go, holy cow, man, I didn't even realize I was going through that. Thank you so much. And they changed their life. Boom. Used my life and my triggers and things that I've had in my life to impact the lives of others. Now you can sit there and do nothing with your life, or you can sit there and take what has happened to you, flip it on his head and use it to do something powerful in your life. Right. And so I want to make sure that I give you at least a few practical tools that I've tried to use these last couple of weeks while I've been having these horrible emotional triggers of thinking I'm not good enough. I'm not going to make it. I can't make enough money. I, 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 right. And that's the problem. When you start to see 
only yourself through you and your triggers and not what you were created to be and not what God has made you for and not what you can do to the impact the lives of others, this is where you stay stuck. And I want you unstuck and I want you moving forward. So I'm going to talk to you real quick about getting over some emotional triggers so that you don't have to deal with that nonsense anymore. And when you do, you'll know how to get out of it, right? Hey, Lauren, <laughs> preach. That's right. I'm sorry. When I get when I get into this, I get so passionate about what I'm doing. I get passionate about saving somebody's life. I get passionate about really connecting with you in a powerful way. I, that's just me. That's who I am. I'm super energized. That's who I am. Not everybody can take me, but the ones who can know I'm real, right? All right. So the first thing I want you to do when you start to feel that trigger come up, when you start to feel an emotional trigger, whatever that is, fear, anger, anxiety, shame, whatever that is, I want you to practice being mindful, practice being mindful. This is powerful. Okay. This is going to be like one of the most powerful tools you're going to use to manage your triggers. Okay. You're going to learn to be present to yourself and what's going on right now. And you're going to observe your thoughts. Why am I feeling this way? What's going on here? Why is this fear coming up? And don't judge it. Don't say, oh, because I'm stupid, because I'm dumb, because I can't. But that, that, that. don't do that. Okay, don't do that. Don't do that. We've had enough of that in our lives. We don't need to do that to ourselves. Okay. I want you to gain control over it. What is that? Why is that here? Oh, fear is here. Okay. It's trying to show me something. What are you trying to show me fear? What's up? You know what I'm saying? What, what's going on? What am I supposed to be afraid of? All that? Well, actually, I can navigate that. I'm good, right? Because believe it or not, these things come up to help you. They they think they are helping you. These emotional triggers are there because they're saying, uh-oh, uh-oh, emergency. We have to help her out or help him out, right? But you have to be conscious about your subconscious and make sure that you are connecting the two so that not the, the subconscious doesn't take over and then you can't figure out why you can't get through things. So practice being mindful, be present with your feelings and don't judge yourself. Okay. Because we do that way too much. Oh, that's so stupid. Why am I thinking that's so dumb? No, it's not. If you're feeling something, it is not stupid. It is not dumb. Stop judging it and just feel it. Okay. I want you to also Number two, identify your triggers with self-awareness. Identify that specific situation that you're going through, that the, the people that are in, in that situation, the circumstances that are triggering you and your emotional response, okay? So you're going to be aware of what is actually happening, not just the feeling, but the situation, the people, the circumstances, everything, okay? Okay. Self-awareness is going to be key for you to manage those emotions and to understand what is causing you to react. So you're going to be present with your emotion. Hello, I'm feeling afraid. But you're also going to think about the why, the, the people, the circumstance, all of that kind of stuff, because that's what's going to help you understand what this issue is that's underlying what is happening here, right? This may mean that you're going to have to explore some deeper issues, like why am I... Why am I afraid? Well, I told you guys, I don't like instability because I lost my home in 2008. I lost everything. We were homeless. Okay. So it was scary, but that's not only the only time I also, as a child was my mother's, my grandmother's, my grandmother's, my mother's, my mother's, my grandmother's, my grandma, my I never had stability. And so that fear triggers me when I don't feel like, uh oh, unstable, got to move. Uh oh, I don't like this right? And when that happens, I have to go deeper and understand why am I being triggered here? Oh, I see. I don't like instability, but is instability uh, when you're moving a bad thing? No, it's part of the process. But by observing your emotional reactions, then you can really get down to what's causing these reactions for you. And then you get a deeper understanding of yourself and you get a deeper understanding of your triggers because there's too many freaking triggers out there right now. There's just too many, right? If somebody says, I'm a Republican, oh my gosh, you're a Republican. If somebody says, I'm a Democrat, oh goodness, you're a Democrat. It's ridiculous. And we start getting triggered and fighting each other. We don't even know why. Obviously, there's something deeper going on than your stupid political beliefs, right? There's something deeper and you have to find out what that is, okay? And you have to learn to then release that, release that tension because you have to sit in that trigger. So this is number three, release your emotional tension, sitting in your trigger, feeling 
this emotional tension that you have, this emotional trigger that's going on. And when you allow yourself to fully sit in it, and let me tell you, it is uncomfortable. It is uncomfortable. Let me, I have been in so much fear the last couple of weeks with everything I've been thinking about with moving and, 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 you know, do I keep my job? Do I leave my job? Do I have to take it to going through all of those emotional things, which is really hard for me. Okay. And when you allow yourself to fully experience and have that emotion and express that emotion, you can start to now release the energy that is attached to that, that negative energy that keeps holding you back. Cause once you transcend that feeling, what's going to hold you back? You don't have the trigger anymore. Okay. This is going to lead to such a great sense of peace. At least it has for me and those who I work with. It gives you a sense of peace and it gives you balance. You're not so afraid anymore. You're not being triggered over every stupid thing that comes your way. Right. But it's important that when you're sitting with these feelings that you should feel safe, that you should be, feel like you're in a place that you're controlled because some triggered feelings can be deep right? They can be really, really deep. I know for me, being a person who almost was killed in domestic violence, when I used to get triggered and nobody was around, I felt that I felt very unsafe and out of control as if somebody was going to come get me, things like that, right? So when you're struggling with that intense emotion of trauma, if you can't sit in that by yourself or you have a coach or you have a, a, a therapist or something, that's what I highly recommend is some kind of um, coach or, or mental health professional or something if there's if the trauma is too deep for you, okay? But you you should feel the, the trigger. You should feel it. I just feel like if you don't feel safe, make sure you find somewhere you can be safe. Okay. Number four, take responsibilities for your emotions. Oops. She said it. Responsibility. Yucky, right? Take responsibility. Recognize that your emotions are your own right? You have the power to control whether or not you are having these emotions. Yes, they can come up, but you are the one that has to accept the responsibility to manage this emotion. You can't just be blaming other people all the time. Oh, he did this. She did that. It's this. It's that. It's that. Stop that. I feel afraid. Why? Find out. For me, it, it goes really, really deep. It goes from, from being punched in the chest to the point where I couldn't breathe right? So I had to sit there and recognize that cry through it, feel it entirely so that I can transcend it. Okay. So I ask you to take responsibility for your emotions. You have control. You have control. So don't blame anybody else because then you lose the power that you have. You lose the control that you have when you blame someone else for how you feel. You have to be able to really own it transcend it so that you can uh, uh, admit to it, be with it, know it, experience it, and then you can overcome it and only you. So please, please take responsibility for your feelings. Don't blame anybody else. That way you can get through it. Okay. Number five, reframe your negative belief. Reframing is huge. Okay. Because your negative beliefs can be really a major source of why you're staying stuck. It's, it's a huge piece as to why we're stuck, why we're burnt out, why we don't feel like we can move forward. And you have to start really reframing what you're believing and focusing on the positive aspects of whatever it is that you're believing. Because believe me, there is always a positive aspect to a negative. Always. Now you can begin to shift your perspective and manage your emotions if you start to look at it that way, right? So I'll use me as an example since I already used me as an example in the beginning, right? With the with the current state that we're in, you know, and kind of a little bit of a limbo, figuring out where we're moving and what we're doing and and career choices and stuff like that, right? My my coaching business is growing, like it's all going extremely well, but there's just nervousness that happens. And I had to say, okay, what what's the negative belief is I can't do it. The positive of, of this is I'm going to see I'm going to try. I'm going to really put my effort in because I strongly know that Nina Perez doesn't play games. Okay. When I put my mind to stuff, I make it happen even through the negative belief system. So that's what I do for myself, right? I reframe. I'm like, okay, this is exciting instead of fear. This is, um, this is new and, uh, unchartered instead of scary and, 
unattainable. So I'm always trying to look at things in a different perspective, because if you stay in the negative, that's on you. Why? Because the, the point before was what? Take responsibility for your own emotions, right? I am always going to go back to that because you are always going to have to be responsible for you. I am responsible for me. You are responsible for you. And if I'm dropping knowledge to you right now, and you're not caring about it or taking notes or knowing that this can help you, that's also on you, right? All I could do is give you the information and hope that you will really absorb what I'm saying to you and understand that these are things that not only have I proven that work for me to transcend emotional triggers, but the group of women, and I've helped many, many women. I wish I had a number of women that I've helped. I don't because I was silly enough not to record all of these from many years ago, right? But these are things that really help people. They really, really do. And so if you take them, great. If you don't, also great, right? Number seven, I think, or six, identify your values. Because when you're clear on what is valuable to you, it's going to become way easier for you to stay really centered. And then you can manage your emotional triggers because some things are not going to be as important. They're just not. Right. Like for me, I was like, oh, no, you know, we got to, you know, the, the politics and blah, blah, blah. And it's really not that important to me. It really isn't. I am more interested in people in their character and who they are and what they're bringing to the world, their value of uh, impacting somebody else's life. If they're not hurting people, things like that. I'm more interested in that. Then I am interested on which political party you land on because they're all full of BS as far as I'm concerned, right? So when you're clear on your values, then you are not going to be emotionally triggered, all right? I value myself, my life, my peace. And so I would never value another domestic violent relationship in my life. That's just not going to happen. So by identifying what you value in your life and then you align yourself and your actions to those values, then you're going to really cultivate that um, uh, purpose in your life. And that's when you start to transcend all of those emotional triggers and reactions that you have. So get your values in order. What is important to you? I realized that I was putting my, um, my, my career in front of my family. I thought I was putting my family first by doing my career, but the truth be told, I've waited far too long to put my family first. And I regret that immensely. Right. And so that is one of the things that I've come to in these last few weeks about why I'm being triggered. And I'm being triggered because I have put too much value in something that did not put value in me. That was an eye opener. All right. Number seven. Let me tell y'all. OK, <laughs> I just I have been breathing more deeply than anything in my life. I have been breathing so deeply lately. It's crazy, right? So learn to breathe deeply. Number seven, deep breathing is really powerful. It actually calms your nervous system. This is actually scientific. It does calm your nervous system. There's a, a system called 555, which is five uh, seconds breathing in, five seconds breathing out. And then doing it five times, repeating it five times. And this is a powerful way to calm your emotional triggers and make your nervous system be regulated, okay? So practice deep breathing, exercise regularly, and help yourself stay grounded. You know what's another cool thing is grounding. Go outside, take your shoes off, and just stand on the grass or on the earth. It just, I don't know, it's the energy of the earth. It just feels so good. So learn to breathe. Okay, because I don't know about you guys, but when I'm going through some really stressful situations, I don't realize I'm not really breathing until I go and I realize, oh, my God, I haven't really taken a deep breath at all. I've been hold practically holding my breath. Okay, so learn to breathe deeply. Five, five, five. Okay, five seconds in, five seconds out. Repeat five times. All right. All right. We're almost there. We're almost there. We're almost there. Okay. I want you to develop some really healthy coping mechanisms. So rather than reacting, right? Because girl, I have been reacting. Let me tell y'all, I have been reacting. Girl has been on some reactional, <laughs> reactional levels. Okay. So rather than reacting impulsively, like your girl was doing last week. Okay. Develop some healthy coping mechanisms. That's going to allow you to really respond in a more constructive way. Do not let 
do not let me be an example last week for real. So make sure that you do the, the deep breathing, that you do some meditation, uh, do some exercise. And another big piece is journaling. Make sure you write a lot because that really, really helps you kind of take all of the shenanigans that you got going on in your head and put it down and away from you. Right. So make sure that you breathe deep, that you exercise, that you meditate, that you pray, and that you allow these fears to just leave and transcend you or anger or frustration or whatever that emotional trigger is, allow it to leave you. Okay. So just make sure that you do that because <laughs> I was totally missing that point last time. All right. So I want you to set some boundaries for yourself. Make sure that you are managing this emotional triggers in your life and learn to say no, because no is a complete sentence. No, period. You don't have to explain anything after that. No is a complete sentence. Okay. So learn when to say no and establish those clear lines around you. Okay. Please. Cause the uh, boundaries is going to help you tremendously in your life. Practice self-care is another one. So taking care of yourself, making sure that you, when you feel those things, that you nourish your body, your mind, your soul, put on some good music, uh, you know, make sure you get enough sleep, start eating right for your body, spend time with people that you want to be around, that kind of stuff. Really support yourself. Okay. That's called self-care. And, uh, and I'm going to, there's so many more, but I'm going to stop right there because there's so many. But ultimately becoming aware of all of these triggers that you have in your life and learning how to take responsibility is going to give you the power that you have within you. It's going to show the power that you have within you to choose how you are going to respond to all of these challenging situations in your life. Okay. So develop a greater awareness of yourself, of your situation, of what you're going through, of what's triggering you, please, so that you can live this life fulfilling, that you can have and cultivate greater success in your life. Because and success, again, is not a six-figure, seven-figure, eight-figure job. Success is peace, joy, happiness. Success is as transcending uh, thoughts and negative behaviors that are stopping you from being who you really want to be. All right. I love you guys so, so, so much. I'm going to try to put this in a, um, a blog for you. So you can go to straight talk, no sugar and you can, uh, uh, get it there on the blog. If you want to get all those show notes. Also, you can look up my new website, ninaperez.com, and that's where I talk about, you know, everything I do in my coaching program. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening. You are the best, okay? I have the best podcasting community ever. I really do. And I appreciate you guys being on here. Make sure you go on to winject.com slash register, W-I-N jectcom slash register and register for my free community because I want to be really um, connected with you and I want us to brainstorm and be with each other and connect in a deeper way. If you are looking for coaching, please make sure that you also email me at hello at straight talk, no sugar edit.com. I work with women and I help them develop that business that they are envisioning in their hearts so that they can win. Thank you guys so much for being here. Love you. Love you. Love you. This is Dina Perez. Straight talk, no sugar added. Until next. Israel is 5,690 miles away from the U.S., 11 hours by plane. Hate travels faster, in a comment, in a post, in a second. Jewish hate is up 388% in the U.S. Black hate, Muslim hate, and Asian hate are up too. When one hate rises, they all do. Let's stand up to all hate together. Share and wear the blue square from StandUpToJewishHate.org.